requirements for air travel within the United States. The rules raise several concerns. There's the expense of acquiring a passport or other approved document. Then there's the potential for disorder. As agitated passengers learn too late, they can't get through security. The Department of Homeland Security's website reveals that starting on October 10th, Visitors seeking access to military bases and almost all federal facilities using their state-issued driver's licenses or ID cards must present proper identification issued by Real ID compliant states. DHS continues, to be clear, this update does not affect identification shown at the airports in the United States. Until announced otherwise, the TSA will continue to accept valid driver's license and ID cards issued by all states. DHS plans to announce the schedule for any changes to air travel requirements by the end of the year and will ensure that state governments and the traveling public are notified at least 120 days in advance of implementation in the very near and real future, a real life controlled matrix where transportation is no longer an individual right. CNN reports, Ford says the newest edition of its X-Max car has a new technology that scans traffic signs and adjusts the throttle to help drivers stay within legal speed limits and avoid fines. But the automated cars won't be obeying the speed limits. BBC reports, Google's self-driving cars are programmed to exceed speed limits by up to 10 miles per hour, according to the project's lead software engineer. Dmitry Dolgov told Reuters that when surrounding vehicles were breaking the speed limit, going more slowly could actually present a danger, and the Google car would accelerate to keep up. Of course, Google just wants you pesky humans to know that all 16 and counting reported self-driving car accidents weren't their fault. It was the fault of those meddling humans that reek of racial guilt and outdated individual freedom. The Daily Mail reports Google's self-driving car has been involved in several accidents since it was launched, all caused by humans, its testers claim. Driving a big, beautiful speed demon anywhere you want without Big Brother sitting in the passenger seat is simply one of those fading American rights that should awaken even the most jaded American mind. Freedom to move when, how, and where you want to in the United States is priceless until the socialistic, communistic, corporocratic New World Order buys up that freedom and hands it over to their next installed puppet dictator with a big red bow on it. I suppose jolly old Nick better get his self-driving sleigh upgraded so the NSA can check their list to make sure if he's been naughty or nice. John Bound for Infowars.com Mr. Stone, thanks for coming on with us. Alex, thanks once again for having me. You bet. Where do you want to go first? <clears throat> Let's talk about uh, the uh, media savagery of Donald J. Trump. I must tell you, not since I saw Richard Nixon, my mentor, the man who gave me my start in politics, uh, under siege in 1974, while the mass media went out of their way to try to destroy him and drive him from public life, have I seen an onslaught like this. Donald Trump proposed a temporary ban on immigrant from Muslim, from Muslim countries until such time as U.S. representatives could get a handle on who, who wanted to come here. And the national media, as you know, has completely bastardized that. They have truncated his comments to make it appear that he called for a permanent ban of all Muslims for all time. And then they launched themselves into this long discussion of whether that would be unconstitutional, when in fact, that's not what Trump proposed at all. He put forward a common sense proposal, which the president of the United States clearly has the authority to do, to freeze Muslim immigration temporarily until we can set up some kind of screening process to vet those who would like to come here. Yeah, I, you know, what this is, of course, is part and parcel of the fact that he scares the political class to death, the lobbyists the consultant class, the special interests, the billionaires, Paul Singer, the Koch brothers, uh, uh, Steve Schwartzman, and others, uh, because you would not have business as usual in Washington if Trump became president. Good God, a president who actually worked for the American people and who couldn't be bought and sold.
Um, the other thing I found really laughable yesterday, Alex, was a charge by Jeb Bush, of all people, that Trump was in league with Bill and Hillary Clinton. Uh, that is, I can tell you, having known Trump for almost 40 years, that is laughable. He is one of the most competitive people in the country. He is running for president because he wants to save this country. Donald Trump would never be a straw man for someone else, anyone else. Well, uh, let me just predict right now that the next major attack on Trump uh, will, will be a bogus claim that he is somehow mobbed up. I can or there's a half dozen news organizations who've been working on this for months. Now, what they don't seem to know is that, uh, that Trump has for over 15 years held a New Jersey casino control operator's license. The New Jersey uh, casino control law is the most stringent law in the country. In other words, you can be denied a license just having met a mobster. You don't have to do business with them. You don't have to trade money with them. You don't have to buy anything from them. Just a social occasion in which you are together can be enough to deny you a license. They are very, very, very sensitive to organized crime influence in the gaming industry in New Jersey. By the way, the New Jersey law is so stringent, it is the model for most of the laws in the country that have, uh, that have legalized casino gambling. Donald Trump has been gone over by the New Jersey Casino Control Commission with a proctoscope. There is nothing there. Now, being in the construction industry in the Northeastern United States, has he met guys who are mob connected? Probably. Uh, is he in bed with the mob? In no way, shape, or form. Uh, and no one ever alleged that with his dad and people. It is hard to believe he's one of the only clean people you know, in that whole thing. But that's, he was the outsider, it was well known, that came in and broke into that. That's why he carried a gun. I mean, that's what I've read. Is that correct? That is absolutely right. Donald Trump is squeaky clean. But, you, but be prepared for a mainstream media onslaught trying to claim that he is somehow mobbed up. Take, for example, his plan to cut the corporate tax rate, which is currently 35. China is 25. Trump would cut it to 15. Literally overnight, all these multinational corporations doing business in China would come home because suddenly it would be more profitable to do business here. Exactly. This the globalists did that to make our jobs, the basis of them, go overseas as a plan to sabotage us. Exactly. Trump would reverse that process and you would have one of the greatest economic booms this country has ever seen. Look, Donald Trump is a very strong supporter of the Second Amendment. As you know, he himself has a concealed carry permit in New York. Um, he is uh, packing heat uh, a lot of the time. He's smart enough not to tell us when. You can imagine how many death threats he's had, not just in this campaign, but an entire career of being outspoken and being forthright. Uh, he, uh, he rejects utterly the whole notion that San Bernardino could somehow have been changed or avoided if we just had more stringent gun laws. I thought he was masterful last night on CNN, arguing that the exact opposite was true, that if people in San Bernardino had been armed, some of them, um, the outcome might have been quite different. So uh, he takes a backseat to no one in his support of the Second Amendment. Uh, in New Hampshire, in Iowa, in South Carolina, uh, gun enthusiasts, firearms owners, I think form the backbone, backbone of much of his organizational support. And I know that he is counting, he and his team are counting very heavily on gun owners uh, for support in these early contests. Well, look, I think uh, Hillary Clinton is going to be very, very formidable, Alex, and uh, she's going to have an enormous amount of Wall Street money. The idea of her ever reigning in Wall Street is laughable. Uh, and she and her husband have many, many, uh, uh, let's call them assets in the media uh, who are, uh, you know, who uh, go to great lengths to cover up all of their blemishes, uh, their many blemishes. Uh, in their outright criminal record, their record of lies, deception, drugs, sexual assault, cover up, lies upon, upon more lies upon more lies. President Obama's record breaking national debt. Raising the debt ceiling, which has done, been done over 100 times, does not increase our debt.
increasing Obamacare tax penalties and premiums, blue-collar depleting trade deals, and overall Zelensky-esque tactics are demolishing the American middle class. As we near the finish line of Obama's two terms, the only change we've experienced is a totalitarian transformation of the presidential office begun by his criminal counterparts that have continuously seized the throne since JFK was gunned down in Dallas. Breitbart reports Pew Research found that the share of American adults living in middle-income households has fallen from 61% in 1971 to 50% in 2015. The share living in the upper income tier rose from 14% to 21% over the same period. Meanwhile, the share in the lower income tier increased from 25% to 29%. Manufacturing accounted for 26% of employed adults in 1971 compared with 11% in 2014. A Gallup poll discovered that since the year 2000 through 2008, 10% of middle class to upper middle class of Americans transferred into the lower class. 62% of Americans have under $1,000 in savings. Meanwhile, Obamacare will raise the penalty next year by 50% for not participating to $1,000 just to make sure that anybody struggling can't get ahead. So their, their goal has always been to eliminate the middle class, raise taxes, give away their health care to poor and illegals, flood the country with immigrants, degrade our position abroad, do everything they can to eliminate the foundation of what supports the free market system, and that is the only threat to their having a permanent hold on power. The goal is to keep a permanent hold on power. When I grew up, I guess it was the years before you grew up, but we had a country of middle-class families who had intact nuclear families. That is, the mother and father uh, were married to each other and raising their own children in one household. And now uh, that's just the minority of people in our country. And But the nuclear family was a self-contained economic unit. They spent their own money made their own decisions, decided how they were going to raise their children. The now pseudo-privileged, financially doomed millennial generation has proclaimed the death of the American dream, according to a Harvard poll. Blindly throwing their collective votes towards the socialist promises of Bernie Sanders out of total desperation, the millennial generation workforce still makes up 40% of the unemployed. This generation will overtake the baby boomer generation as the nation's largest living population approaching 75 million strong. A generation that will inherit the mind-controlling PC culture, dwindling middle class numbers, Obamacare penalties and rate hikes, and crippling student debt. If you thought the middle class was in trouble now, you ain't seen nothing yet. John Bound for Infowars.com. Brain force is here. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been on this the last few months. You probably noticed I've been more crazed, more focused, less brain fog, more energy, more special reports, and it's because of brain force. One of the worst things with most energy products is it's not sustainable, right? You're gonna crash, you're gonna feel really bad afterwards. This has a bunch of different antioxidants and compounds and polyphenols. Everybody's on these drugs to knock their brain out because the brain's so fried. We kept changing this formula over and over and over again until it became sort of a grand puzzle. For example, the L-theanine inside of it, that is activated by the different compounds in the yerba mate that we put inside of it as well. This just increases the compounds you already have. This is what you're actually designed to run on. Exactly. It's kind of like a car will run on one form of junkie gas, but it runs really good on what it's designed for. You will find Brain Force, Survival Shield X2, and other game-changing products at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life vitamin B12 formulation. Most forms of vitamin B12 are highly processed and synthetic and could not be properly absorbed by the body. That's why for real results, so many are having to turn to painful B12 injections, which are known to have higher absorption rates. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. 
Secret 12 is a binary of neutromedical grade, bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12, methylcobalamin, the same kind used in B12 injections, and adenosyl cobalamin. Secret 12 is simply taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Don't take my word for it. Try it.